And welcome back to Power Breakfast. Time for us to talk fashion. It is Fashion Friday and I make it my business to try and get to know the hottest designers, stylists and fashionistas uh, that Kenya has to offer. My guest for today is a fashion designer, Olga Nato. Welcome to Power Breakfast. Thank you very much. Thank you for bringing such pretty dresses. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I like it. Thank we'll talk you. about some of your collections a little bit later on, but first I just want to talk about you. You have a background in PR and communication, is that correct? Right. Yeah, right. So that's what you studied? I studied public relations, yeah. Okay. Did you work in that field before you became a I did. A designer? I worked for almost two years mm -hmm. before I started this journey. Yeah. Yeah. What was lacking there for you that you found in this new career? I had um, a background in fashion, like I loved fashion. so. Even though my dad would not let me study it, but I had it. So there was that burn in my heart that I need to do this, I need to do this, but I didn't get a chance to go to school. So while I was working now, I thought this is the opportunity to do now what I want. Yeah, I did yeah. a degree for the parents. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then later yeah. I switched into fashion. What was it that drew you to this world? What was it that you loved so much about fashion? Well, um, I lost my mom at the age of nine. So she left us with lots of clothes. I only have one sister. Mm -hmm. And my mom was a very fashion forward woman. So I started reconstructing and redesigning the clothes that we were left with. Mm -hmm. And that's where my love for clothes and fashion came. Yeah. So later in life, um, after campus, I moved to another country abroad. And there was just world apart. I would either get very high end outfits of very low quality so mm -hmm. the middle class basically had had no room yeah. so yeah so i felt there was a gap in that and when i came back home i wanted seriously to pursue that and i enrolled in um graphics and design just to go around it yeah, yeah but um my sketches my drawings i would just do stuff that are related to fashion yeah yeah awesome uh so talk to us about the journey of beginning as a fashion designer, when did that start? What year were you starting to roll out your pieces? My journey would begin like four years ago. Yeah, I had just moved from home to my small house and I knew this is now, this is me, this is the time to start me. Mm -hmm. And so I started off with just one tailor and it was because I was afraid. I was so afraid to, to start this my brothers would tell me like who gets to retire before they start working <laughs> <laughs> because i was just two years old in, yeah, in PR, pr world mm -hmm. yeah and it was well but i decided you know what i'm gonna take this and um i had friends that were in fashion already who held my hands and yeah that is how the beginning of my journey what were some of your concerns at that point what were you scared would would or would not happen rejection yeah not knowing much and in in fabrics not knowing much because i did not have a background in school for mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. but i ensured that time to time i would go to youtube to learn what's trending what's in the world how to cut how to make because lots of my collection when i was starting were inspired by my late mom mm -hmm. i wanted to look at her as a young woman how was she dressing in the 70s wow. and how could i bring the 70s to modern yeah. so i wanted to combine the two to bring this so i wanted to see her live in my collection yeah that is truly inspired thank you let's talk about the kenyan fashion market as you're right. entering so many people are in in the scene trying to stand out trying yeah. to get noticed trying to have their pieces sold yeah what was it that was different about you that you felt you could bring to the table i had the same thing i've said i had a cut of the old and the modern mm -hmm. so there are lots of people today that would want to relate something that was done before even what i'm wearing you can see it's very classical yeah. it's stuff that wow used before mm -hmm. and so that is what i wanted to bring and that is not what everybody is competing for today yeah and then also my choice for fabrics the mm -hmm. fabrics that i use are uh, i tend to use very sheer fabrics and african fabrics just fabrics that um, you have to be daring you have to want to be like that mm -hmm. to associate with my 
brand. One thing that's unique about you is yeah. that you, everything that you make is Kenyan <coughs> made. Exactly. Including the fabrics you source locally. I source locally. Time to time when I have shows abroad, I, I get um, fabrics out of the country. But most times, yes, I get my fabrics locally. What was that? Why, why did you make that decision, that conscious decision to say everything I'm making is, is going to be from home? I wanted to be original. I wanted to be Kenyan. I've met a number of people that get to make stuff, but then they brand them like Gucci. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and I'm work. thinking, yeah, it's, it's very important to recognize that we have talents locally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I want to talk about your award that oh. you won. Tell us about uh, this award thank you, you thank today. you it was quite exciting for me i have been traveling a lot for fashion both locally um locally i've done kenya fashion awards among other shows internationally i've done a bedding fashion week twice in a row mm -hmm. and um i've been invited to showcase in Mercedes Fashion Week, New York Fashion Week, what? I've been invited. But both of these, because of their budgets, mm -hmm. I was not able to go. Mm -hmm. And this year, I've been invited to Cannes Festival. What? Yes, oh, which I'll be amazing. talking about later. Mm -hmm. So out of this contribution, this was a prestigious show in um, Nigeria. So these guys saw how consistent I've been in my work in everything that I do, and they decided to reward me with the, this award. Wow, yeah. that's incredible, congratulations. Thank you very much. I mean, just a, in, in, a, in a few short years, you've managed to accomplish I know, it's quite been a, a push. <laughs> <laughs> well, you yeah. it seem like it's just been, you know. I know, easy. it's been such a push, yeah. yeah. Mm. Your pieces, uh, I just want to talk about uh, your, your collections, because I think it's, it's really interesting. I was looking on your website, you have, this is a champagne collection that this you is brought champagne collection. for us today. Talk to us, talk us through this. Well, um, if you've gone through my website, I think you've seen much more than this. Mm -hmm. My collection was in, inspired by Champagne, so that's the name, Champagne. It's and just such a pretty, pretty, <laughs> pretty color. Like, thank it. you, uh -huh. thank you. I showcased it um, at the Moet event that we did a collab with them mm -hmm. about two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to show the people that attend Moet that you need, how they need to dress. Um, because sometimes you invite people in high-end events and they show up in trousers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we well, wanted it can be a little bit intimidating. <laughs> Some, yeah, people just don't know. Yeah. Don't know how to dress so we wanted to create this that when you're invited in some events like those, how you need to show up. Okay. And so, yeah, um, one of the pieces was actually nominated or, or put as the brand ambassador from where to be wearing one of the pieces that you will see later That's again yeah thank you yeah, talk, yeah but talk to us about these individual pieces what's what's the inspiration happening here um this was basically chickish uh, i wanted to uh, see it's very conservative uh, a bit revealing but mm -hmm. very conservative mm -hmm. um this was a simple look that i wanted to create just for a woman who is just trying to get in if you can see i've used sheer mm -hmm. and i've used a stretch fabric so it covers a lot it's unlike the other one that we will see but yeah. this covers a lot yeah. so we were actually looking at this at the first time for the Moet girls that this would perfectly um, work uh, for the ashes. Yeah, so this was made for that. So it looks fun, flirty, young, yeah, like yeah, it. yeah. I really like it. Right. Yeah. Mm. And we have something completely different on this other exactly. end. Exactly. <laughs> so this one. It's it's a lot of fabric. I've used like 16 meters. What? Yeah, of this, <laughs> and this is lace applique. This okay. was done by hand. Wow. This yeah, these are stitched by just by hand, mm -hmm. and the lining gets to be here. This is very revealing. Okay. It's for a woman who is daring, and knows what they want, mm -hmm. and um, wants to get that that they want mm -hmm. yeah where would you wear that to uh, example <laughs> i said moet event yeah, really a high, high end sort of high end party. we have lots of red red carpets on yeah you'd want to wear this mm -hmm. very very executive um cocktails and evening 
um yeah evening it's a lot of fabric but it's a beautiful dress thank <laughs> you thank you yeah it's a lot of fabric i wish w we could get pictures of it and then you see how how, flows. how flowing it is and the wings or the hands are like I can yeah it's it's <laughs> Pretty somewhat. Yeah. So yeah. you talked about that being for a, a bold, strong woman who knows what, yes. they, what they're trying to get in life. Who yeah. is that typically who you design for? Like who do you exactly exactly? Um, there's that inner me that is is very untamed, and then then there's the outer me that is very tamed. Sometimes when I design, they are in competition. <laughs> <laughs> who wants to come out yeah. much stronger but um, my collection basically talks to those women that um, are fearless uh, sexy they know that they're powerful and they want still to keep it um, cool mm -hmm. and they want to look sophisticated yeah yeah I want to talk about the whole aspect of you making uh, Kenyan made uh, designs because uh, we've had this conversation a couple times here on Fashion Friday where uh, people might feel a little bit intimidated by the pricing of, of some of these dresses. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're trying to promote Kenyan designers and, and you know promote their work, but it's not cheap to make these clothes, I'm assuming. Exactly. So let's talk costings <laughs> a little bit. Costings. Yes. Um, Costing, I will still say I'm very much affordable. Okay. Um, my gowns start from 25,000, and so I believe that is um, a very achievable, especially if you know what you want. Mm -hmm. What makes our um, a lot of designers' cost to be higher than the stuff that we get abroad or elsewhere? Like things that are mass produced, yeah, right? things that um, they it they're all computerized, and so production is very easy mm -hmm. you do not have to do a lot of calculations to do this for me i have to work with um, a particular size yeah and um just the fact that you're doing you're not doing mass makes your work to be detailed it's custom i got to talk to you like we are talking i got to understand your body mm -hmm. i got to understand your style i got to understand your taste I got to understand the environment and where are you going to put on this dress? Yeah. Are you going to work? Are you going for a party? Are you going to attend a wedding? Mm -hmm. All this, it takes time. So when I'm sourcing for fabrics, mm -hmm. all this I put in consideration. And so this is what leads me to the cost. Yeah, to creating yeah. special, unique pieces. Exactly. You dress quite a number of celebrities. Yes, <laughs> I have. <laughs> seen online. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can mention a couple of people that you've worked with and the types of uh, you know, pieces that you've made for them. Um, I'll count for the most recent. Mm -hmm. I was very honored to dress Sarah Seren. It, that was the most exciting point. She's a woman that I adore a lot. And um, I've worked with Janet Mbugwa. I've worked with your very own uh, Lillian Muli, yeah. Betty Kialo, Yemi Alade, um, Carol Odero, um, yeah, Sheila Muniga. So the stars are lining up to yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. That's, I mean, you haven't dressed me yet, so... Um, we'll we we about are about that. to get about <laughs> to that we'll today. Talk about that later. Yeah. Um, but what, what has that experience been like, like seeing your pieces on, you know, people that you admire or people that have, you know, huge followings and, and you're seeing them showcasing your work? I, um, I forgot to mention Akode. Oh, and Akode, <laughs> Madame Boss. But Madame Boss, Boss yes. <laughs> so um, it's quite humbling, yeah, to see that you can produce something. And, you know, clothes um, and women, there are lots of attachment and uh, emotions with clothes. Um, a woman will not step out when they are not convinced that they are looking nice. True. And so for me to have the feeling that somebody stepped out in NATO and they were actually feeling confident about that, it humbles a lot. Mm -hmm. It humbles a lot and it gives me the strength to carry on. Yeah. Yeah. The works that you've done, uh, you know, both that have been showcased here, you've won, you know, this award this is from award, Nigeria. Yeah. You've, you've traveled abroad, you've been invited to Mercedes Benz Fashion Week and yeah. so many other things. Yeah. What message are you carrying with you as, <laughs> as you go out there? keep trying, keep pushing. Um, I've worked with a lot of stylists. I think that is also another thing that has made me to grow. 
I've worked with a lot of stylists in doing collaboration. I've worked closely with Connie and other big stylists. I think keep pushing, know what you want. You do not have to run it alone. If you cannot doing a, do it alone, have somebody to work with. Yeah, because you said you started off with one tailor. Yeah. I'm assuming now. <laughs> uh, we've grown now. I have yeah. a team now. Mm -hmm. I have a team now, yeah. 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 And it's, it must be very important in terms of picking that team of who you trust and who has the same vision exactly. for the work that, uh, exactly. that you do mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Uh, you've accomplished so much in a short amount of time. Yeah. I'm sure someone is watching this and being like, how? Like how? You know, he must have faced at some point some some obstacles or, yeah. you know, made some pieces that didn't sell or have you had those moments of thinking, uh, I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> I'll say doing this uh, again, it's very expensive. Some people think that if you get to showcase, you get your returns immediately. It's never immediate. It's a long term. It's an investment. So that has been when because as, as I travel abroad, normally you cater for your own flights, accommodation, the show, we get to pay the show. And that will bring me back to Cannes. I need a bare minimum of 2.5 to showcase at Cannes. Yes, the show is 1 million. Of course, I'm looking for sponsors. If somebody yeah, can do that. So how does that work? You find partnerships like you've done with Moet or how um, do you raise the funds for that? Currently, I'm, I'm pushing that alone. I don't have any sponsor to oh. that, but I'm determined that I'm going. Yeah. I'm, yeah, it's, it will start from the 8th to the 18th, oh. but the show is just for today, May next, oh, month. May, next month. Yes, yes. So got to find some cash. I have to get a sponsor. <laughs> yeah. If you're out there, you come. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, the show only is one million to, to enter. Then I need cost of production. I'm, I'm, I must be traveling with somebody. And then, yeah, cost of flight, um, accommodation for all these. Yeah, it's high. That would be a so huge milestone in your career, though, right? True, true. It's, it's, it's the Stephane. biggest. It's the biggest uh, that, yeah, I'll celebrate my life this year for that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, these are one of the challenges, yeah? Mm -hmm. People fear to invest in this. This will have returns later. They could not be immediate. Like the shows that I've done, you don't sell on the runway. Well, occasionally I get to sell a few pieces from the runway, mm -hmm. but you don't get to sell there. So if you have um, the heart that you will, you will get your money if you travel, you'll be disappointed if you do one show and there's no return. Yeah. But you keep pushing, and I, my mind is very open always to collaborate, even with celebrities, s to get your work out there. Mm -hmm. I always do that, so that is how I get my returns. Yeah. yeah. Another thing about you that you seem to have uh, gotten this far uh, in such a short amount of time is I think your background has helped you quite a bit in, in your education, right? Yeah. Because you know about communications and, and marketing and, and, and PR and all those things and you know a lot of people just think that they'll get by on talent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's always the case. Perhaps you yeah. can speak to you know younger designers who look up to you or, or yeah. fashionistas who want to get into this business about having that foundation and having that background. Yeah, I think um, again it's very important to know the focus. I get to train a lot of uh, fashion designers now. Um, lots of these fashion schools send their young people to train under me to intern with me. I've met a number of a uh, number of them. Quite a few, though. Um, I know good schools that I've worked with that they are trained all around and they know what they want. But I've met these young people that, um, you know fashion is still really it we are getting there it's still really not in there mm -hmm. our parents are struggling to accept that this can be this yeah. can pay yeah yeah it actually pays but you have to focus in each and everything that anybody is doing focus is the key mm -hmm. put your focus there and you will you get your returns these people it's like they're they got this, um, they were called to do this, like, okay, your parents got you these papers, go to Kenya Poly, yeah. Kenya Poly, go to this school mm -hmm. to learn. And um, they just like, I'm doing this for my father, oh, which I also did. Mm -hmm. But um, I think it's very right to have a conversation with your parents exactly on the line of career you want to take. 
then because that will lead you to your future if mm -hmm. you miss this and you have a, a quite miserable life i think yeah. afterwards yeah. so i think it's very right to know what you want you can have conversations with your parents to get you right on what to and if not you got other people to talk to to hold your hands i get to train a lot of people i'm very happy to the these young ones that they exactly know what they want mm -hmm. uh, they go for it i am i currently have um, a student from machakos university um i'm so amazed of how much she wants yeah she gets to push me she gets to make me be on toes yeah yeah it's amazing that mm. you have for that type of passion also to give back and to mentor yeah. uh, these young people. Uh, we were talking about sponsorship for Khan and maybe people watching who want to be mentored by you. Yeah. Uh, perhaps you can share your, your website or your social media uh, accounts or how people can get a hold of you and your, and your pieces, of course. Thank you. I am best in Hallingham, Hallingham Plaza, on the ground floor, at room number 19A. Um, um, on social media, w on Facebook, I'm Olga Nato. On um, Instagram, I'm Olga underscore Nato. And my website is www.olganato.com. Perhaps you can spell your first name for us. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Olga is A U L G A H. Okay. Olga and the NATO is a four letter word just okay. N A. It's not NATO. People yeah, people pronounce it as NATO, <laughs> but it's okay. Um it's N A T O. Yeah. Yeah, and um my number, my office number is zero seven two seven one twenty two nine two. I'll say it again. Zero seven um two seven one twenty two nine two. Okay. You can reach us on that, yeah. Okay. Mm. Well, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure meeting you. Thank you very and much. Congratulations on everything. Thank you. And best of luck next month. <laughs> I am so excited. <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited. It's yeah. a milestone, yeah. I think it's, a, it's incredible to see. It feels like, to me, it's like a brand new dawn of fashion in Kenya. Exactly. Where we thought this is what Kenyan fashion designers make and this mm -hmm. is what it looks like. We never thought of this or, or the <laughs> piece behind you. They're yeah. just so elegant and so very, very exquisite. So Thank you. Uh, nice to meet you all. Thank you and so very much. For joining us Looking forward to dressing you yes. next. That's, that's <laughs> happening. That's happening. Now yeah. that we've met, yeah. uh, definitely I'll, I'll, I'll stop by sometime. Thank you. Shop very early much. And, and talk to you.